Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured, but the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. In looking at the fragments of the ontological or metaphysical poem by Parmenides of Alea that we do possess, one of the key themes that's very important for the history of philosophy that arises is the interrelation between thought, and generally that's expressed here in terms of noain, uh, the activity of thinking, and being, ani, to be. And, and for Parmenides, these are actually going to turn out to be the same. And, and I don't think you can say the same thing because that sounds as if there's many things and these two happen to be the same thing. Um, for Parmenides, ontologically or metaphysically, there's only one. There's only, can you call it one thing? There's only one reality. Everything else is false or non-being or, you know, a becoming that is, is also a lie. So, um, you know, there's some paradoxes that arise in how the, the poem is itself articulated, given that that's the case. But one of the, the key ideas that he's putting forward is what we call monism, this notion that at bottom or, you know, ultimately, everything is one reality. Everything is the same thing. And you could say anything that doesn't fit into that would, would actually not have any being at all. Um, strictly speaking, it should be unimaginable or unsayable. And he does kind of hint at that at different points, but he also does contrast two different paths. And so the one path, the true or trustworthy path of being, the one that the goddess is revealing to him and saying that mortals generally aren't on this path because they think that there really is becoming and there's motion and change and multiplicity of, of things. The true path of being says that being is, non-being is not. And it asserts that it's wrong to say that non-being is. It's also wrong to say that being is not or that something is not and that um, being could change in any way. That's there later on in the poem. So there's these two paths that are laid out for, for him. And he's advised to use thought as a way of judging between these two ways, ultimately of thinking, or you know, you could say thinking well and thinking poorly, thinking the right way, thinking in ways that go astray, right? And, and the ways that go astray rely on our habits and our senses. Pure thought is what's required in order to fully understand the option between the two paths in front of him, the path of being, the true path, and the path of non-being or becoming or illusion or, or lies, however you want to put it. Um, so thought is, you could say, the instrument or the, the ability that allows us to formulate this problem in the first place, a, a problem of thinking, and it's also what gives us access to being itself if we follow the right path, according to those, again, that Parmenides has laid out. So that's one way of understanding the relationship between thought and being, right? Being, in that case, would seem to be, you know, ontologically prior. It's, it's there, and then here comes the thinking person, and wow, they can see being as such. 
And, uh, you know, being would be just fine without the thinker because uh, being is and it's not going to like, you know, go out of existence if there's no thinker. That's one way to look at it. But Parmenides is actually going further. He's saying being and thought are actually the same. They're not something different. So this implies that thought is not just thinking being as sort of at a distance from it. Thought is how being grasps itself. And so we are invited, uh, you know, in the poem to join in on this by traversing the same path that Parmenides lays out for uh, himself in the mouth of this goddess, who could be the same thing as just our minds as well. So here we want to think about a few uh, key passages that I have here in, in Greek. And I'll, I'll tell you the Greek and then we'll talk about some possible translations of it. So thought as being itself. In fragment three, which is very short, he says, Togar auto noen estin tekai enai. So noen is the, the infinitive for think, right? To, to think or the act of thinking. And ani is being. That's the verb for to be, to, to actually exist, to, to have being. And uh, the, some of these things like tekai and, and gar, those are these sort of particle words. Gar means something like, uh, so therefore, or, you know, uh, hey, look at this. And, you know, kai means and. Uh, so togaro to. For it's the same. Auto means the same. To auto, the same thing. Uh, so, you know, look here. This is the same thing. What's the same thing? These two things that are connected by the, the verb here, estin. Esti is the same verb as ani, and they both refer to being, right? Uh, so being is actually showing us that thinking and being in the infinitive are the same thing. Um, you, could, you could translate it as, for it is the same thing to think and to be, or you could translate it in more generally, thinking and being are the same, right? Uh, or you could say are identical, or they're not different from each other. There's a lot of different ways you could, you could frame this. But what is it asserting there? Thinking and being not different from each other. Thinking is, if it's real, genuine, authentic thinking, is showing us how things are, including about that very same thinking, right? Or you might say, turning it on the other side, being to be is to think. So that being thinks itself. He goes on and he says that, um, this is in fragment four, what can be said, uh, and, and when I'm saying fragments, I mean from the deals, uh, fragmenta for the for Socratica, um, what can be said, legain, there's the word to speak or to say, and thought uh, must be. So now he's not saying that everything that we can say, every verbal formula we can come up with is therefore existing as such, you know, like the unicorn poked me in the eye with his horn or no unicorns, right? So I'm not getting poked in the eye with a horn just because I've said it because the proviso here is what can be said and thought, what can truly be thought, what can be thought through is, exists, has being. So a little bit later, um, in the long section, um, which is uh, fragment eight, he will say two other things about this connection between thought and being. Um, and they're both actually in the same you know, section. So he says, Tauton desti noen, takai huniken esti noema. So we've got two different thought words here. Noen, this activity of thinking, and then we have noema, that which is thought, right? And so what is he saying there? Again, we have a tauton, uh, it's the same thing, tauton, right? Um, desti, this is the same thing. What is the same? Thinking 
And, now, huneken is a composite of two words. Henneken, that on account of, and then ho here. That on account of which there is thinking, or we could say that thought and the object of thought are the same thing. What is the object of thought? Being. So, thought and what is being thought by thought, i.e. being, those are the same thing. This is another way of framing it, but it's going a little bit more into precision, saying whatever it is that we are you know, taking in and thinking about, that is thought, the activity of thought. So that's a, a nice way to translate it. This uh, translation here has, um, here we go, um, do, do, do. We want to find that section. You, uh, yeah, you. The same thing both can be thought and is that which enables thinking. Right. That's a little bit more obscure, actually, but but it's not a bad way of thinking about it. That which uh, we can think about. That's the enables there. He follows up by saying Ugaraneuto eontos and ho. Perifastimenon estin hereses to noein. Very fancy Greek phrase there, right? So the, the, we could actually turn it around and start here. Hereses um, and the ugar, right? Uh, ugar, for you will and you will not discover. Hereses is the word that we get heuristics from. You will not discover or find uh, to noein. Thinking, you will not find thinking without or not in the presence of. And now, to, to eontos, uh, you will not find it outside of something that has being. Eontos is, is the, in here the participle, right? Enho um, perifastemenon estin. Um, so this is coming from the, the verb to, to, to articulate, to, to speak, right? And ho perifastimenon estin, that in which we can express something. So it's translated here as a little bit, you know, less uh, literally. You will not find thinking apart from what is, on which it depends for its expression. Now, what depends on what for its expression? In, 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 it kind of goes both ways. Thought depends on what is in order to articulate itself, in order to say itself. But being also needs thought to express it. So there's this really interesting, complex relationship of two things that are asserted to be the, the very same thing, thought and being, in these sections in Parmenides' poem. It's not so simple as to just say, well, thought and being, same thing. There is a, a matter of articulation. There's a matter of sort of interdependency. There's a matter of reflexivity that's involved there if we sort of read between the lines and call out what has to be the case in order for this to really make sense. So this is a uh, profound insight if it's actually true, by Parmenides in his poem, The Identity or Unity of Thought and Being.